Otto Heinrich Frank was a German businessman, who later became a resident of the Netherlands and Switzerland. He was the father of Anne and Margot Frank and husband of Edith Frank, and was the sole member of his family to survive the Holocaust. He inherited Anne's manuscripts after her death, arranged for the publication of her diary as the diary of a young girl in 1947, and oversaw its adaptation to both theatre and film. Chapter 1 Early Life Otto Frank was born into a liberal Jewish family. He was the second of four children born to Alice Betty and Michael Frank. His elder brother was Robert Frank, and younger siblings were Herbert Frank and Helene Frank. Otto was a cousin of the furniture designer Jean-Michel Frank and a grandson of Zacharias Frank. His father originally came from the town of Landor, and moved to Frankfurt in 1879, marrying Alice Stern in 1886. Alice and Michael Frank placed value on a middle-class education. Otto had music lessons, learned to ride a horse and visited the theater and opera regularly. The Frank family enjoyed a large circle of friends, and kept a welcoming home. Otto studied economics in Heidelberg from 1908 to 1909 and had a work experience placement at Macy's department store in New York City thanks to a college friend his age, Nathan Strauss Jr. However, after leaving for New York, he had to return home briefly after his father died in September 1909, before once again leaving for the United States, returning to Germany two years later in 1911. Chapter 2 World War I Frank served in the Imperial German Army during the First World War. He and his two brothers were called up for military service in August 1915, and after training at a depot in Mainz, he served in an artillery unit on the Western Front in which most soldiers were mathematicians and surveyors. He was attached to the infantry as a range finder at the Battle of the Somme in 1916. In 1917, he was promoted in the field to lieutenant and served at the Battle of Cambrai but two of his French cousins, Oscar and Georges, were killed in action. According to other sources Otto was late returning home because he was ordered to confiscate two horses from a farmer and returned them to the farmer when the war ended in defeat. Chapter 3 – Marriage and Children Frank worked in the bank that his father initially ran, which subsequently he and his brothers took over until its collapse in the early 1930s. He married Edith Hollander, an heiress to a scrap metal and industrial supply business, on his 36th birthday, the 12th of May 1925, at the synagogue in Aachen, Edith's hometown. Edith was 25 when they married. Their elder daughter, Margot Frank, was born the 16th of February 1926, followed by their younger daughter, Anne, on the 12th of June 1929. Edith died of starvation and disease in Auschwitz on the 6th of January 1945. In late October 1944, Margot and Anne were transferred from Auschwitz to the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp where they died of typhus. In 1953, Frank married Elfriede Geringer, a Holocaust survivor, who assisted him with the Anne Frank Foundation in Basel, which he launched a decade later. Geringer's daughter, Eva Skloss, is a Holocaust survivor, peace activist and international speaker. Chapter 4, World War II As the tide of Nazism rose in Germany and anti-Jewish decrees encouraged attacks on Jewish individuals and families, Otto decided to evacuate his family. In August 1933, they relocated to Aachen, where his mother-in-law resided, in preparation for a subsequent and final move to Amsterdam in the Netherlands. In the same year, Otto's widowed mother Alice fled to Switzerland. Otto's brother-in-law Eric Elias worked in Basel for Opecta, a company that sold spices and pectin for use in the manufacture of jam. Originating in Germany, the company was looking to expand its operations in Europe, and Eric arranged for Otto to work as Opecta's agent in Amsterdam, allowing Otto to have an income to support his family. Otto and his family lived in Moedepplein in the modern suburb of Amsterdam Zert, they came to know many other German emigrant families. In 1938, Otto Frank started a second company, Pectaken, which was a wholesaler of herbs, pickling salts, 
and mixed spices, used in the production of sausages. Herman Van Pels was employed by Pechtaken as an advisor about spices. A Jewish butcher, he had fled Osnabrück with his family. In 1939, Edith Frank's mother came to live with the Franks in 1939, and remained with them until her death in January 1942. After Germany invaded the Netherlands in May 1940, Otto Frank was forced by the Germans to give up his companies. Otto made his businesses look Aryan by transferring control to his employees. In 1938 and 1941, Frank attempted to obtain visas for his family to emigrate to the United States or Cuba. He was granted a single visa for himself to Cuba on 1 December 1941, but it is not known if it ever reached him. Ten days later, when Nazi Germany and Fascist Italy declared war on the United States, the visa was cancelled. At the age of 53, when the systematic deportation of Jews from the Netherlands started in the summer of 1942, Otto Frank took his family into hiding on 6 July 1942 in the upper rear rooms of the OPEC to premises on the Prinzenbracht, behind a concealing bookcase. The day before his older daughter, Margot, had received the written summons to report for so-called labor duty in Germany, and Otto immediately decided to move the family to safety. They were joined a week later by Hermann van Pels, who was known as Hermann van Daan in Anne's diary, his wife, Auguste van Pels and their son, Peter van Pels. In November, the group was joined by Fritz Pfeffer, known in Anne's diary as Albert Dussel. Their concealment was aided by Otto Frank's colleagues Johannes Kleiman, whom he had known since 1923, Miep Geis, Victor Kugler, and Beck Voskail. The group hid for two years, until their discovery in August 1944. It is not known if an informant, or chance discovery by authorities, ended their period of refuge. The group, along with Kugler and Kleiman, were arrested by SS officer Karl Silberbauer. After being imprisoned in Amsterdam, the Jewish prisoners were sent to the Dutch transit camp of Westerbork and finally to Auschwitz-Birkenau, where in September Frank was separated from his wife and daughters. He was sent to the men's barracks and was residing in the sick barracks when the camp was liberated by Soviet troops on 27 January 1945. After the liberation of Auschwitz, Otto Frank wrote to his mother in Switzerland, where she had fled in 1933 when Hitler came to power. He travelled back to the Netherlands over the next six months and searched diligently for his family and friends. By the end of 1945, he realized he was the sole survivor of those who had hidden in the house on the Prinzengracht. Chapter 5, Letter from the Monoway Steamship The closer we get to home the greater our impatience to hear from our loved ones. Everything that's happened the past few years. Until our arrest I don't know exactly what caused it, even now, at least we still had contact with each other. I don't know what's happened since then. Kugler and Kleiman and especially Meep and her husband and Bep Voskuel provided us with everything for two whole years, with incomparable devotion and sacrifice and despite all danger. I can't even begin to describe it. How will I ever begin to repay everything they did? But what has happened since then? To them, to you to Robert. Are you in touch with Julius and Walter? All our possessions are gone. There won't be a pin left, the Germans stole everything. Not a photo, letter or document remains. Financially we were fine in the past few years, I earned good money and saved it. Now it's all gone. But I don't think about any of that. We have lived through too much to worry about that kind of thing. Only the children matter, the children. I hope to get news from you immediately. Maybe you've already heard news about the girls. Chapter 6, Post-War Life After Anne Frank's death was confirmed in the summer of 1945, her diary and papers were given to Otto Frank by Meep Guys, who rescued them from the ransacked hiding place. As Meep Guys wrote in her book, and Frank remembered, Mr. Frank immediately started to read the papers. Later he began transcribing them for his relatives in Switzerland. 
he was persuaded that Anne's writing shed light on the experiences of those who suffered persecution under the Nazis and was urged to consider publishing it. He typed out the diary into a single manuscript, editing out sections he thought too personal to his family or too mundane to be of interest to the general reader. The manuscript was read by Dutch historian Jan Romain, who reviewed it on 3 April 1946 for the Het Perul newspaper. This attracted the interest of Amsterdam's contact publishing, which accepted it for publication in the summer of 1946. Otto Frank is now recognized as a co-author of the diary. On the 25th of June 1947, the first Dutch edition of the diary was issued under the title Het Octahuis. Its success led to an English translation in 1952, which led to a theatrical dramatization and eventually the film The Diary of Anne Frank, with actor Joseph Schildkraut as Otto. Otto Frank married former Amsterdam neighbor and fellow Auschwitz survivor Elfriede Geringer, in Amsterdam on 10 November 1953, and the couple moved to Basel, Switzerland, where he had family, including relatives' children, with whom he shared his experiences. In 1963, he founded in Basel the Anne Frank Foundation, which is devoted to global distribution and use of the diary of Anne Frank. The non-profit organization uses the proceeds of the copyrights for charitable purposes, education, and scientific research. In addition the foundation in Basel supports projects in the field of human rights, racism and rights and promoting social justice. In response to a demolition order placed on the building in which Otto Frank and his family hid during the war, he and Johannes Kleiman helped establish the Anne Frank Foundation in Amsterdam on 3 May 1957 with the principal aim to save and restore the building so it could be opened to the general public. With the aid of public donations, the building and the adjacent one were purchased by the Amsterdam-based foundation. It opened as a museum on 3 May 1960 and is still in operation but the rest of his life Otto Frank dedicated himself to the publication of the diary, and the ideals his daughter had expressed in it. Otto Frank died of lung cancer on 19 August 1980 in Bursfelden and his ashes were buried in the town's cemetery, where Elfrieda would also be buried, in the same tomb, 18 years later. He was survived by his stepdaughter Eva Skloss, his sister Helene Frank and her two children. Otto Frank designated the Anne Frank Foundation in Basel as his sole heir and legal successor, which means that the copyrights of all Anne Frank's writings belong to this organization. Chapter 7, Legal Fights Against Nazi Sympathizers In the years after the diaries were published, Otto Frank became embroiled in a series of legal battles with individuals who accused him or others of forging the manuscript, these cases would persist even after Frank's death in 1980. In 1959, Frank lodged a criminal complaint on the grounds of libel, slander, defamation, maligning the memory of a deceased person and anti-Semitic utterances against two members of the right-wing Deutsche Reichspartei, Lothar Steilau, and Heinrich Bodiberg, who had dismissed the diary as a work of fiction. In 1976, Nazi sympathizer Ernst Romer accused Frank of editing and fabricating parts of Anne's diary. Frank filed a lawsuit against him. As with the previous case, the court determined that the diary was authentic. Roma ordered a second investigation, but this time involving Hamburg's Bundeskriminalamt. It was claimed that parts of her diary were written with ballpoint pen ink, which did not exist prior to 1951. However, these parts were simply two scraps of paper not attached to the manuscript, and clearly written in different handwriting, and some page numbers, presumed to have been added by Otto Frank when compiling the diary for publication. Reporters were unable to question Frank, as he died around the time of the discovery. Chapter 8, Books The Diary of a Young Girl, and Frank ISBN 0553-29698-1. And Frank Remembered, Meet Guys and Alison Leslie Gold ISBN 0671-66234-1. And Frank, The Untold Story. The Hidden Truth About Ellie Vorsin, The Youngest Helper of the Secret Annex, your own de Brain and Dupe van Vyck ISBN 9 trillion 789 billion 82 million 901 thousand 306. 
The Hidden Life of Otto Frank, Carol and Lee ISBN 0670-91331-6. Roses from the Earth, The Biography of Anne Frank, Carol and Lee ISBN 0670-88146. Love, Otto, Cara Wilson ISBN 0-8362-7032-0. Eva's Story, Eva Scloss ISBN 09523716 Miriam Pressler, Treasures from the Attic ISBN 1407231103 Chapter 9, Films Otto Frank was played by British actor, Ben Kingsley in the 2001 miniseries and Frank, The Whole Story. Otto was portrayed by Italian actor, Emilio Solfrizzi in the TV movie Memories of Anne Frank.